Today I'm going to be talking to you about the NATA's position on head down, contact, and spearing and tackle football. Uh, the purpose of the NATA's position on head down contact and tackling in tackle football is to provide recommendations and information to help reduce the risk of cervical spinal injuries. Um, it is also to show that regardless of whether or not a hit is intentional or unintentional, that this type of contact is not only dangerous, but it is against the rules. That education um, on this uh, risk of injury um, is very important, and making sure that we teach the best tackling technique is crucial. Uh, the goal is to make sure that everyone from the coach, player, to the officials, athletic trainer, and the parents are informed about the seriousness of this issue and are dedicated to minimizing the occurrence. The position on head down contact and spearing and tackle football has changed drastically over the years. Um, it is now an accepted and known position that the primary mechanism of cervical spinal injuries is axial loading that occurs as a result of head down contact and spearing. Yet in the 60s it was taught that face to numbers was uh, the tackling technique at that time, which we later recognized as unsafe and uh, position for tackling, but still fatalities and the number of injuries continued to rise um, at that time. And till several years later, it was recognized that there needed to be a major change in equipment quality, taught technique, rule enforcement um, as a means of prevention. Uh, initially, when they came out with uh, hard shell helmets in the 60s and 70s, uh, players were far too dependent upon those helmets to keep them safe, which is also just proves that technique is crucial. Um, as methods of prevention were administered over the years, there, there has been a positive change in the number of injuries and fatalities, uh, but in spite of all these prevention measures uh, that have been taken, these injuries still occur. Prevention is essential and needs to be maintained in order to manage and decrease the number of of incidences. Uh, the NITA recommends that uh, a number of different things to help aid in the prevention of these injuries. Uh, it is important to remember that cervical spinal injuries neither um, are caused or prevented by players equipment. Intent is subjective when it comes to regulation and that these types of injuries not only occur to defensive players but they can occur to any player. Um, like I mentioned before, education and coaching is extremely important. Every athlete, coach, official, athletic trainer, and administrator needs to be educated on the risk of cervical spinal injuries um, and the measures that need to be taken to eliminate them. Coaches should be teaching and demonstrating and enforcing proper technique from the beginning. Athletes should be making contact with their shoulders um, or chest to make sure and making sure that their head is kept up at all times. Uh, when a player keeps their head up, they can see when impact is going to occur and prepare the neck muscles for impact, which reduces the risk of injury. Uh, this technique needs to be learned and practiced. Uh, if a player cannot learn this technique, extra practice may be necessary. Preseason and midseason um, education sessions um, should be implemented for the players as well as their parents um, to uh, educate these people on the risk involved with the head down hitting. Hitting with the face mask is against the rules and should never be taught. Um, it is also advised that a neck strengthening program be uh, implemented into um, athletes daily workout regimen as additional protection and avoidance for these types of injuries. Rules in officiating um, are also necessary and should be uh, implemented for uh, prevention of cervical spinal injuries. Existing rules need to be enforced. Uh, stricter officiating brings awareness to coaches and players about the effects of their behaviors. And uh, annual education for officials uh, needs to reiterate the importance and purpose of head down contact and spearing rules. Officiating, uh, understanding, and implementation of these rules needs to be monitored and kept accountable by a governing body. body. Plain and simple, the reduction 
in incidents and enforcement of rules will further reduce the risk of injury. Everyone involved can do their part in aiding and in prevention.